that I want to lift this passage of scripture up under the subject, don't believe the devil's lie. Don't believe the devil's lie. One of the absolutely most unbearable emotions that any person can experience in life is to reach the conclusion that no one cares about them. In that memorable scene from the Chaz Palminteri movie, A Bronx Tale, Sonny the Gangster ends a conversation with his young protege with these words, nobody cares, kid. Nobody cares. When a person feels that nobody cares, what has entered into their consciousness is that they do not believe that anyone is really concerned about their welfare. That nobody gives a thought as to how they are doing. That no one has any regard as to how they are getting along. And these sad words, nobody cares. This grim, lamentable sentiment was expressed in the line of a song sang by the late Ronnie Dyson entitled One Man Band. And in that song, one line in it says, I'm going to take good care of me because nobody cares about me. Church, I do not feel that there is a more melancholy, a mournful feeling than to believe that nobody cares. Not the utterances from the mouth of an actor or from the voice of a singer. But in real life, everyday experience, to come to the conclusion that nobody cares. Somebody under the sound of my voice today has never experienced this. You have, praise the Lord, always been enveloped by the love, concern, and care of your circle of family and friends. However, I believe that there are others who at some point in time, even if you never articulated it to anybody else, in the stillness of your solitude felt in your heart, in your mind, and in your soul, that you were all alone and that not a soul on the face of the earth cared anything about you. It may have been while in the throes of emotional distress, financial difficulty, physical affliction, spiritual exhaustion. Anybody ever been spiritually exhausted? I mean, you did not think you could go one step further and you wasn't out cutting up in the world, but you were in the house of the Lord rendering the best service you could. But you had come to a point, and I know we sing that song, and it's a wonderful song by the late uh, Reverend James Cleveland. He said, I don't feel no way tired. Yeah, but whenever I hear that, I said, well, leave me out of that. <laughs> because I can't sing that song honestly and said, I've never felt tired while on this journey. But one thing I know, we can get tired, but God will give us a second wind. And when we get that second win, that's when we can say, I know that God can do anything and everything but fail. It may have been spiritual exhaustion. It may have been walking through the valley of the shadow of death or bereavement. But there somebody was feeling all alone. And you know, the worst thing, I, even, even worse than feeling alone by yourself is to feel alone in the midst of other people. You own your job, but you're feeling alone. You're in this classroom, but you're feeling alone. Even in the home where there is somebody who is saying they love you, sometimes it seems like you're fighting a solitary battle all by yourself. And you come to that point, nobody, nobody cares. Because there's no one to encourage me. There's no one to give me a hand of assistance. I think I'm out here all by myself. Oh, if you've never been there, praise the Lord. But if somebody has been on that street, well, church, in times like this, and believe it or not, I'm almost through. In times like these, this is why we must 
know the word of God, love the word of God, be inspired by the word of God, led God and directed by the word of God. For when the memo is sent from hell and delivered by the devil to our street address, email, Facebook, X, formerly Twitter, Instagram, or any other platform, when the devil sends that memo that says nobody cares, and he does that, we have another directive. And we've got to understand that one directive has come from hell, but this directive comes from heaven, from the very hand of God himself. The hell cell memo says nobody cares, but the heaven sent directive supersedes and overrules the communication by the devil. And the directive straight from the Lord is found in the words of our text. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, under the mighty hand of God, under the, not the weak hand of God, not the uncertain hand of God, but humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due season. You see, the problem with some folk, they don't want to wait for due season. They don't want to, they want everything to be hunky-dory all the time. But friend of mine, after we have suffered for a while, then he'll come in and he will exalt us. He'll make a prayer, he'll make a table before us in the presence of our enemies. Hello, anybody ever been there? You've been going through. Folk been trying to keep you down. You're trying to get out of the situation. But God says, stay right there. I'm going to make a fool out of your enemies. Stay right there. Don't you run away from it. Stay right there. I'll prepare. I'll prepare. I'll prepare. Any good cooks in the house? Come on, y'all, don't be, don't be shamed. Let me see some hands. Any good cooks in the house? Oh, you can burn. You can do that thing in the kitchen. Oh, whatever you cook, uh, everybody wants to come around. You're not like some folk I know that I'm very close to. And they say, are you cooking anything? And I say, yeah, oh, oh good gracious, I know I need to be somewhere. <laughs> but when you cook, everybody wants to get around the table. When you cook, before the food even hits the table, you can see folks doing, and they be saying to that, don't that feed smell good? And somebody else say, it tastes even better than it smells. But let me tell you something. I don't care how good a cook you are. You can't prepare a table like the Lord can prepare a table. And when the Lord prepares a table, it's surely prepared. And the devil and all his imps are not going to be able to take the sweet taste, the aroma out of that food. The taste buds are going to be just perfect. Because the author of that meal is not auntie, auntie, uncle, grandpa, grandpa, but the author of that cooked up meal. The chef of that meal is not Gordon Ramsay. The chef of that meal is the Lord who sits high and he looks low. The Lord who is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all, I may ask our thing. He has prepared every morsel and he'll let you and I sit down in the midst of our enemies and enjoy a heaven prepared meal but wait your time don't get impatient don't you be over here when God has your blessing right here there are a whole lot of folk who church hop they get mad at the preacher they get mad at an officer they get mad at some of the members, and off they go to join another church. But let me tell you something. If you think you're going to find perfection over there, you're going to be sadly mistaken because the only thing you're going to do is to find the same mess or worse, and your blessing is going to be in, the, in your rearview mirror, and you're going to be wondering why you lost your joy. You're going to be wondering why you lost your anointing. You're going to be wondering why you lost your smile. You're going to be wondering why you lost a bounce to your step. I'll tell you why. You got impatient. You got out of the perfect will of God for your life. But I'm telling you, the word says right here, humble yourself. Therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. And then do what? Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. The other translation says it like this. Leave all your worries with him. Leave all your worries with him. I said to somebody today, I said to you, leave that worry with him. 
Don't you carry it around by yourself. You all know this little story, but I'm going to repeat it again. That great preacher, Tinley, W.A. Tinley, in Philadelphia years ago, he was in his office, and one of his officers stopped by. The officer said, Pastor, can I talk to you? I got a lot of things on my mind. Dr. Tinley said, come on in. The man spent the next 45 minutes talking about all the troubles he had in his life. He said, well, Dr. Tinley, I've taken up enough of your time. He said, I'm going to go now. So the man got up and headed to the door. When he got to the door, Dr. Tinley says, hold up. I tell you what I want you to do. He said, yes, sir, what do you want me to do? He said, I want you to get all your burdens. Hello, somebody. I want you to sack them up, and I want you to leave them with the Lord. And then when that man left, he wrote the words of that song, If you trust and never doubt, he'll surely bring you out. Pack your things up and give it to the Lord. And that's what I've come to tell somebody today. You about to go crazy with a certain situation. You don't know how you going to make it. Folk are giving you all kind of advice, and most of it is bad. But you better on your way home today. Get you a paper bag. And by the time you get home, financial troubles in the bag. Relationship problems in the bag. Employment problems in the bag. Take that bag. Say, Lord, these are your problems. These are your situations. These are your concerns. I'm your child, but I'm your child who's weak. I'm your child who's bent down. I'm your child who don't know which way I'm going to make it. So I'm going to stop trying to do it myself. I'm going to give that problem to you, and I'm not going to give it to you. Take a few steps, then go back and get it again. I'm going to take it from you, and I'm going to leave it there. Leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burden. To the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. I'm going to my seat today. But this ought to be jumping up shout news for somebody. This ought to be jumping up shout news for somebody. This ought to be just, that song gone. I don't already moved on. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> this ought to be jumping up shout news for somebody today. You may be young. You may be older. You may be in between. That even in those times when you feel that nobody cares, the word of God gives you to know that God cares. Don't fall for the devil's lie. For if you fall for the devil's lie, you'll give up. If you fall for the devil's lie, you'll throw in the towel. If you fall for the devil's lie, you'll call it a day. If you call for the devil, fall for the devil's lie, you'll be disappointed and it will overtake you. If you fall for the devil's lie, discouragement will be your constant companion. If you fall for the devil's lie, you'll take despair all the way to your grave. But I've come to tell you today to reject the devil's lie. Don't fall for the devil's lie to respond to what God has said in his word to cast all your cares upon me and I will take care of you because I care. This simply means somebody to, to do what? Give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. He can handle it, whatever it is. He can handle it. Oh, y'all sitting here looking at it. Well, somebody, I tell you what, you better tell yourself there's no problem that I have that's too big for the Lord. Things may seem like they're going to be going bad for the rest of your life. The dark clouds are covered over your head. The storm clouds are coming in. The rain is falling. The wind is blowing. But God is still on his throne. He's still able. I said he's still able. He's, you know what the Lord told me? He said, you go preach today. They may sit there and look at you, but you just go on and preach anyhow. You preach if nobody hear it but you. Because somebody needs to hear that God cares for you. And if you know it, somebody you know needs to hear it. And you need to tell them this week that God cares for you. He hadn't forgotten about you. He knows who you are. He knows your name. He knows every hair on your head. He knows all your burdens. And he'll take it. And you can make it. You can make it. You can make it. Whatever it is, let God handle it. Get out of God's way. I don't know about y'all preachers, but there have been some times when I messed up bad. 
because I got in God's way. He's trying to tell you, tell me, son, get out the way. I'll handle them. Get out the way. I'll handle them. Get out the way. I'll handle it. Get out the way. I'll do what you can't do. But sometimes pride and ego. I got this. The Lord said, would you please get out of the way? And watch what I, watch what I, watch what I. Do you need to know who I am? I created the heavens and the earth. I looked out into absolute darkness and said, let there be light. I, I, I hung the stars in their silver socket. I gave the water its wetness. I gave the sky its blueness. I gave the grass its greenness. I gave the fish to be able to fish and manipulate in the water. I created the mountains. I created the streams. I created the oceans and the rivers. I gave life to humanity. Now, what are your qualifications? Let me handle it. And at times I was bullheaded, stupid, crazy, imbecilic, and still tried to handle it. If I didn't make a mess. But I'm thankful, Brother Todd, I know a mess when I see it even if I'm the one that created it. Just because I did it, that don't mean it ain't no mess now. You know, some folks, that's, like, that's their problem. It's a mess if somebody else do it, but it's all right if they do it. Well, I found out that when I created a mess, Lord, I'm sorry. I know you don't want to have nothing else to do with me. He said, come here. Come here. I heard the voice of Jesus say, do what? Come unto me and rest. If you're weary, if you're worn, I will give you rest. I know you messed up. Somebody, you can't forgive yourself for something you did in your past. Folk keep bringing it up. They won't let you forget it. But I've come to tell you that God puts it behind his back. Y'all got that image now? The, the word says he puts it behind his back. He puts it in the sea of forgetfulness. Now I tell you, you big, you bad, but I dare you to go behind God's back. Try to dig some mess up on me and go behind God's back. But see, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. If I say you better not go behind God's back to get my mess, I better not go behind God's mess trying to dig yours up. I just help somebody there if you heard that. Let other folk believe that I don't know. Nobody cares. But friend of mine, if God cares, one with God is always a majority. <laughs> the whole world can be against us, but if God is for us, everything is going to be all right. So, so tell the devil, Satan, keep your lie to yourself. Satan, I tell you what I want you to do. I want you to take your lie on back to hell. You got the wrong address. I said, you got the wrong address, Satan. Now, I got a, a, a relative, they'll accept it. I got some friends, they'll accept it. I got some coworkers, they'll accept it. I got some church members, they'll accept your lie. But you better take that lie straight on back to hell where it belongs because I know who I am and I know whose I am and I know whose hands I'm in and I know whose arms I lean on. I'm not accepting your lie. So take it on back where it comes from. Friend of mine, once we put the devil in his place, once we tell him to take his lie on back to hell where it comes from, we can go through hell and high water because we know God cares. We can climb the mountains of difficulty because we know God cares. We won't let loneliness bring us down because we know God cares. 
We're going to make it. And you can tell yourself, talk to yourself and tell yourself, I'm going to make it. You ain't got no money. I'm going to make it. Your health and strength is failing. I'm going to make it. All your friends are forsaking you. I'm going to make it. They're hanging your name on the highway of disrepute. I'm going to make it. Why are you going to make it? Because I know. I said, I know. I don't think. I don't speak. I don't reckon. I know that my God cares. And I'm going to be all right. I said, I'm going to be all right. Because somebody said in your situation, I'm going to be all right. Say it like you mean it. I'm going to be all right. Why? Because the Lord cares about me. If the Lord cares about me, ain't nothing the devil can do to me. I know. I said, I know. I said, I know. I said, I'm just going to be 10 minutes. I'm through. I'm through. Let's stand. Let's stand. Today is a day of reckoning for someone. You thought about it long enough. You may have even prayed about it. But you're still trying to do it yourself problem that I had could not seem to solve. Prayed and I prayed. Kept getting deeper involved. But I gave it over to Jesus. I stopped worrying about it. I gave it over to the Lord. I gave it over to the Lord. I gave it over to the Lord. And the Lord worked it out. <laughs> Come on somebody, give God some praise. Look back in your life to those situations where God worked it out for you. And just the power he had yesterday, he still has that same power today. And to somebody who hadn't trusted the Lord, the little song says, it is no secret what God can do. What he done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. And you need to make a decision today to come out from where you are to where you need to be. Stop doing it alone, but give it over to the Lord. You all may have heard this story. I've shared it over the years in invitational situations. The revivalist was preaching a revival an outside tent. And on Monday night, there was a chieftain of the local Native American community. So during the invitational period, he came down the aisle with a beautiful flowing garment. He said, big chief, Give garment to Jesus. He was there the next night. He had a woman with him. When the invitation came, he came down the aisle. He said, big chief, give squall to Jesus. He came back the next night. He came back the next night. And he had a headband common among the Native American community. And he said, big chief, give head wrap to Jesus. The next night, which was the final night, big chief came down the aisle again. But he came empty-handed. And everybody was wondering, what was big chief going to give to Jesus tonight? Big chief declared, preacher, I've given a head wrap. Big chief has given a squall. Big chief has given a beautiful flowing garment. But tonight, Big Chief, give Big Chief to Jesus. Somebody, you need to put your name in the line and replace Big Chief. And you need to say, today, I give myself to Jesus. If you're in the internet audience, there's a place for you to let us know that you've made a decision for Jesus. And if you're here in the sanctuary, 
I want you to step out of the pew into the nearest aisle and come here and make a public confession that you are ready to let the Lord come into your life. Man, woman, boy, or girl, don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Don't fall for the devil's lie. There's somebody who cares enough about your soul to have sent his son down through 40 and two generations. Somebody's cared enough about your soul to have that son walk the face of the earth doing miracles, walking on water, raising the dead. But it, but it didn't end there. The great sacrifice that was made on Golgotha's hill at Calvary's cross when Jesus was hung high, stretched wide, then he died because there is no greater love. So if you're here, don't let this moment, this opportunity pass you by. Someone else you've already accepted Jesus, but you need a church home. And I'm here to tell you that Allen Chapel would be a wonderful place for you to land. So I'm in an internal countdown right now. I'm about at nine, coming on down through eight to seven, six, five, four, three. Are you sure today? Are you sure? You don't need to give your life to Jesus. Are you sure you don't need to join this branch of Zion called Allen Chapel? Are you sure that you don't need to come out of a backslidden condition? He'll pardon you. It is no secret. No secret what? What God can do. Why don't you just look at one somebody and say that to them. It is no secret. They're not going to bite you. What God can do. What he's done for others. What he's done could you just look at one person? Could you just look at one person and say that to him? He'll do for you. He'll do for you. With arms wide open. With arms wide open. Open. He'll pardon you. It is no secret.